Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're in Chapter 1, Lesson 1 1.4 of Plate Motion for Amplify. Uh, today's lesson took me a little bit longer than normal, so uh, you might be needing to spend a few minutes to take a look at this section uh, and prepare some other papers to either cut and paste. Uh, I used it in OneNote so the kids weren't cutting and pasting, but they were drawing. So make sure your drawing skills are up to date with uh, OneNote. Uh, they start out clicking on chapter one, they get into lesson 1.4. As we enter into 1.4, I'm reminded mentally that in 1.3, uh, that in some of the classes I needed to take a few minutes in this class to remind them of the homework questions, uh, that they needed to answer those three uh, questions they had in the homework for lesson one decimal three. So in 1.4, we click on the warm up. Inside of the warm up, uh, they're being asked to make a claim. Based upon some of their simulation work yesterday, they're being asked to make a claim between do the plates cause earthquakes or do the earthquakes cause plates to move? They choose a claim, and then it, below there's a question why did you choose the claim? Uh, in my class, we're choosing to write one note in all of the white dialog boxes where the students are typing out answers if they're wanting to be in Amplify. Uh, but I'm having them copy the question, paste it into OneNote, and then in OneNote they answer the question explaining why they chose to make claim one or claim two. And then obviously they walk through in this lesson, they're having you go to the simulator, work through the simulator, uh, which is clicking on step two. In step two, you, they want you to have them use the simulator. There's a lot of dialogue back and forth in the as the teacher looks at the instructional guide. If you shrink the instructional guide, the instructions are quite short. Uh, the kids choose claim one or claim two, and they're trying to watch the simulator do its thing. And the one difference today with the simulator activity is the kids need to be told to turn on the, the earthquake indicator. So if they don't turn on the earthquake indicator today, then them trying to prove or disprove or uh, counter the claim, uh, they're going to have a difficult time. So have them open up the simulator. Uh, the simulator, again, is in the top left-hand corner where you have the what is called the digital hamburger. If you scroll down to the plate motion simulator and bring up the plate motion simulator, uh, I instruct my kids to, and they're using the simulator, to try opposites. So if they put land in the middle horizontally, then have them try to put land, and the next time they rebuild the landscape, have them put land from top to bottom, north to south, and then choose a different kind of plate boundary to put in, whether or not it's convergent or divergent. Uh, have them choose opposites, perhaps. And then the third time they run it, I had my students in the simulator uh, create a landscape that mirrored South America and Africa <coughs> 300 million years ago, where they had a mass of land from the north to the south across the entire simulator. And then the second time, they, the third time they did it, they have them put a divergent boundary to simulate what's going on currently. So when the simulator opens, make sure they have the earthquake indicator open as well. When they hit run, Later. So they tell them to pick region two because region two is similar to what they're doing. Uh, so when they put the rocks on there, put them from top to bottom and then have them put a plate boundary in and they have to actually set the boundary before they can choose divergent or convergent. So when they click on add or remove rock, when they click on add rock for the third time, um, I have them placing rock on both sides of this boundary and then I had them set a boundary and I had them pick divergent and they need to have on the earthquake indicator uh, so when they click on run that they're able to see what's going on so when it goes run and they observe this uh, if they click up here where earthquakes is <coughs> excuse me you can see earthquakes occurring along the mid-ocean ridge uh, so when you bring things up, and you could also turn on active volcanoes so that they can see that active volcanoes usually occur along a plate boundary. You can see the time is still running and the plates are still drifting apart. It goes on and on and on. So you could then hit pause, have them 
close out the simulator and then go into the next activity uh, seeing if their activities promoted or refuted their claim that if plate motion caused earthquakes or earthquakes caused plate motion when they get into step three uh, they're being asked to use a map that is available if you click on the instructional guide here it expands down and you'll see some of the prompts that you need to show the kids It'll be off to the right um, inside of OneNote let me show you in OneNote what's going on um, I brought up so these this document here the modeling plate boundary the do's right here on the page are also in the amplify page and I what I had the kids do was to draw rather than cut they drew a connection between all of the earthquakes that are running between Africa and South America you could also have them take their marker and draw over here on the right uh, if you choose your marker in one note and then you pick a color uh, I heard that there was a lava color here and so I had them connecting dots where this Saudi Arabian plate and then I had them do the Caribbean plate I had them do part of the cocoa plate and I'm having them do part of this Nazca plate over here <coughs> in one class I had my students indicate that where the next potential plate is where Africa is pulling apart just like Madagascar had pulled apart there I wish this cross-section word was somewhere else maybe over here in the Pacific Ocean rather than the Indian Ocean so I could show them how the shape of Madagascar matches up with the shape on the east side of Africa and then I have them connecting some of the dots over here for the Indian plate and then also down here for the sandwich plate I had them because today when we recorded data uh, we had a 5.1 earthquake recorded in the sandwich plate so that's what I'm having them do in amplify and then down here with the same worksheet where they taking a look at the modeling of the boundaries you can see that I had drawn on top of this map here because the similarities and the differences we I asked them about between the top rectangle and the bottom rectangle they saw that there was no rock and that the continents were floating down here so I had us fill in what's actually going on we have the mid-ocean ridge here because of the direction of motion of the yellow and then we had them draw <laughs> these are supposed to be my mesosaurus fossils but you can see that they're both in Africa and South America and that the Pacific side of South America that we have a divergent boundary of the Nazca plate descending and then it's dewatering and melting here on the west coast and we get volcanic activity uh, I should probably draw the rest of the volcano and having volcano material coming out because uh, the Andes mountains are littered with lots of volcanic activity so that's what I was doing with that one diagram you can see down here that uh, the, one of the questions in Amplify that the kids have been asked to answer, what is the land like where the Mesosaurus fossils are found? And then I went and walked through the kids through that, gave them a sentence starter to get them participating in the activity. Because a lot of times my students don't want to participate. So by giving them a lot of sentence starters, it's getting them to be active in the activity. And then I clicked on next activity. We go to step four and notice that there are six steps in this unit. <laughs> For step four, there's a lot of instructional stuff for the teachers. They bring up the map uh, of where the Mesosaurus fossils are found. You talk to them about how they're found on the other side of the ocean and that the fossil itself does not indicate that the lizard could or dinosaur uh, could swim long distances in salt water. And then they bring up the other uh, plate boundary map and where the earthquakes are. This map we took out of uh, earthquake.usgs.gov instead of waiting for Amplify to show us that's what that map there was for and then there's some dialogue that they prompt you to show and then remind them of the claim that they made whether or not it moves quickly or it moves slowly uh, and based on the current rate as well that the continents are moving I had them look at their fingernails and tell them that the plates are moving as fast as their fingernails are uh, currently and maybe 200 million years ago they, they were stimulated to move a little faster but a sudden movement isn't likely because the present is the key to the past as far as we were taught in school so then you scroll down and the kids look at the map and you ask them some of those questions whether or not they choose to follow claim one or claim two then you go into the homework section in the homework section sorry my alarm is going off in section one the homework section I have my students uh, looking at the word bank tomorrow we're gonna make sure all of these 
words are in our vocabulary section in our OneNote with a definition and an image if they don't already have it. And then they were asked, supposed to answer this question. And you can see Mr. Williamson said, blah, 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 was the answer in Amplify because we're copying these questions and pasting them into our OneNote, answering those in our OneNote. So what is a land like where the Mesosaurus fossils are found? Well, they're found in solid rock. So then we go on to section six. Six is optional for the kids, uh, but <clears throat> I don't like them to have just optional. So I ask them to follow through and answer all the questions. So answering the questions, copying and pasting the questions into OneNote, there are, I believe, six questions here. So make sure that the kids are, there are five questions. So make sure the kids are going through that process and getting those things finished by wandering the classroom and checking in and for 